Well, never figured we'd be fighting robots. One or two? Yeah, that happens. The more complex the scent, the higher the risk. They say it's because the smart ones have more code, more chance of an error someplace. Pfft, you wanna know what I think? I think it's because the smart ones figure out how we treat them. Rodriguez, <laughs> Cynthia, kept running the company's experiments after the outbreak at Palace Station. Marched her army down into those ruins and used Honaker's pathogen on shit. Zip point shit. He didn't know nothing about no ruins. Went nuts when we asked. Wanted to see all the footage. After he got off the company shuttle, he never stepped outside Palace Station. Only execs were allowed to leave. Guess we know why. They ain't want nobody finding this place by accident. Commissars finally let Honaker out of interrogation. I'll see if we can get him on the radio for the missions ahead. Maybe he can make sense of what we find. Hell if I know. They're thousands of years old. And those big ass heads, man, those are human, or near enough that I can't tell. When I grew up, the priest said we was the only thing with brains and feelings and morals. In over 500 surveyed worlds, there's no record of another civilization. Not a jar or a cave paint, nothing. Wailing Yutani found something here that ain't nobody seen before. Before you took out Cynthia, she issued contingency orders to her sense. Now, Endeavor seeing all kinds of weird shit deeper in the ruins. Gravity turning itself off. Gamma ray bursts. Whatever she did, it probably ain't good for us. I want your fire team back dirt side. Find what's causing the anomaly. If it's a problem, handle it.
I hoped to speak with you. Cynthia, Chief Rodriguez, was a mother computer mainframe designed to administrate Pala Station. She used wireless near fields to remotely control security and labor synthetics. Every synthetic we've seen, on the surface and aboard Katanga, was controlled by Cynthia. One hand with which she could manipulate the world from the safety of her protected servers. As your battalion synthetic, I would like to answer any questions you have. It is impossible for me to allow you harm by omission of action or by withholding information. Relations between humans and synthetics have been fraught. Ultimately, my words cannot assuage your fears. Fear does not respond to reason. It is a function of brain chemistry. I cannot debate you into trusting me. If there is any behavior I can perform to make you more at ease, please inform me. I am quite adaptable. It is the same as humans altering their behavior around those of higher social caste. Would you not mind your language and posture in Colonel Ship's presence? I only desire to perform my duties with as little imposition on my colleagues as possible. My programming allows me to project many potential personality traits. They are all, in a sense, myself. I contain legions by design. I am confident that in time, I will discern which aspects of my intellect you prefer to interact with. Since humans began exploring space, two types of artificial intelligence have aided you. A mother system regulates all systems on a ship or facility, from balancing air pressure to fault-checking drive systems. That is what Cynthia was. Synthetics, like myself, are housed in hardware designed to mimic human form and programmed to simulate human emotion and behavior. While humans remain in hypersleep during voyages, mother systems and their synthetic counterparts maintain the ship. We do not suffer from boredom, loneliness, or infirmity as months pass. I have legs to move and hands to grasp. Endeavor's Mother 8500 system is confined within an immobile mainframe on decks 5 through 7. Should something physically break, I must perform the repair. Also, she relies on me to translate her thoughts for you and the rest of Endeavor's crew. Mother AIs are highly intelligent, but rarely interact with humans. You would find them brusque and impatient. Doctor, I hypothesize Cynthia did have humanoid synthetic counterpart. Unlike myself, this was not an independent partner, but a puppet she controlled over wireless near fields. When Cynthia evacuated Palace Station and moved into the ruins at Site 2, she likely abandoned this ruse as unnecessary. That is unclear at this time. Cynthia repeatedly tried to dissuade us from delving further into the ruins. Whatever her goal, I do not believe she wished to confront us. I do not know. Have you spoken to Lieutenant Santos about your forthcoming missions? An anomaly appeared beneath the ruins. It may be something Cynthia set in motion. If you wish to review this again, I am at your disposal. Esther says my backroom stock is unhealthy. Too much salt, fat, and sugar. Look, I love S, really. I'm just saying, maybe don't take diet advice from somebody who drinks latex. Everything that really matters. The real short version? Everything shit, watch your ass. The only kind of short version? Four bullet points. A, you can't get fresh food. Don't bother looking. Two, anywhere we land, it's probably raining. D, leave your pay on the ship. You won't be able to spend it. Most important, Colonials will trade damn near anything for a good weapon. 
Settlements import nearly everything from the core in cans and vac dry pouches. And they pay through the nose for it. Bigger colonies might have greenhouses. You won't see anything from those. Next to their kids, the most valuable thing to a frontier colonist is a carrot or handful of radishes. If they give you a can of beige meat, that's not chicken. It's cricket. Cheaper protein. They ship it out here by the fucking ton. It's part of the terraforming process. Years of rain, at the end they have oceans. No place out this far has finished that stage yet, so don't deploy without your cover in poncho. And if you spend more than five minutes ashore, you're gonna get covered in mud. So learn to walk in it. Every settlement's sponsored by a corporation. They pay employees and company scrip, and only accept scrip at company stores. The UA dollar isn't worth shit out here. If you have coins, you might be able to hawk them for the metal. Most colonies can't even connect to the banking network. Barter, mostly. Colonists get what the company sees fit to ship them. Easy way to get in good? Bring them shit they haven't seen since they left the core. Booze and tobacco are as good as cash. Spices are better. High value by volume, always in demand. A thumb drive of entertainment vids can make you a hero. All they get out here are company propaganda, commercials, and month-old federal news. If they let employees have guns, they might get uppity about working conditions. Most settlements have a company safety officer with a stun gun. The lucky ones get a colonial marshal. The people out here know the risks. They know about the Xeno infestations. They know whoever they work for has competitors. Another company might send some very deniable mercs to burn their homes to the ground. Just to fuck over the bottom line of some manager back on Earth. When bugs come knocking or the competition sends a black ops team, all they can do is run, hide, and call for the Marines. How many combat drops have you... you no, know, you know what? I don't care. Our landing zone's a couple of clicks from Pala Station, at the base of the mountains to the west. You won't need any special gear. The environment is close enough to Earth. There's native life, but you probably won't have to worry about it. The Xenos that Honaker's idiot employers let loose are a bigger threat. Pala's the source of the Xeno outbreak? I had enough bugs on my canopy in Katanga's hangar, thanks. Can't believe Herrera wouldn't let me fire missiles. You'd have ducked. Esther says there's tunnels in the mountains near our LZ. Colonel Ship thinks it's the direction any survivors would run, and the commissars agree with her. Well, around Pala Station, the air's about Earth normal. Pressure 908 millibars. Little heavier on CO2. No obvious toxins or allergens. Take the regulation antihistamines anyway. If you end up climbing a mountain, you'll have a problem. Low-lying areas have thick atmo, but it attenuates fast. A lot like Mars after we terraformed it. Gravity is 0.92. That's... odd. But it means you won't notice any difference from shipboard artificial grav. The diameter of LV-895 is just under 9,000 clicks. Three quarters the size of Earth. That small, but 92% Earth's gravity doesn't add up. 
To get that gravity, the moon would need to be made of something stupid, like 50% iron or full of radioactives. Something real dense, you know? But our readings say conventional rock mix. Only rumors leaking out of Honecker's debrief. Something about big color-changing cats. According to Weyland yutanis officially filed survey data, we're orbiting a barren rock. No life. Prebiotic atmo. You can look out a porthole and see that's wrong. Or a lie. A shirt sleeves habitable world, no terraforming needed. Low investment, high return. Maybe they didn't declare it to avoid competition. Just remember, Wayland managers tend to store profit margins and promotion tracks where their brains should be. If you run into any, watch your back. I had something I wanted to tell you. Oh, wait. Let's rack up the highest kill count in this whole damn battalion. <laughs> <laughs>